I have a very special model just waiting to be washed and cured. A portion of this episode is sponsored by Nico Industries. Head to Nico Industries for printable props, armor, and more. There you are. Welcome back. The Anycubic Wash and Cure, the old one, the small one. It's performed okay. It seems limited in the functionality, but again, we're talking about a machine that spins something in a tub and then illuminates something. Those are the only functions it does. It still does more than a robot that gets butter. Thank you. The basket system is a little antiquated. The platform, there's not a lot of space in there once it starts turning. Plus this bucket, look at the spinner right there, the spinner. That's the snow you shouldn't eat. Don't eat that. What if you had something that was bigger? <laughs> now you do. And done, it's out of the box. So already I can tell that this is quite an upgraded experience. First of all, huge. The hood is bigger, in fact. It's just about as big as the whole machine. Ha, wonderful. Oh no, that's really big. Whoa, the spinner on the inside. Let's see, can you see that? That's machined metal. And the lid is has a gasket and sealed. So just like the smaller one, you can put your isopropyl alcohol in here and it's not going to evaporate nearly as easily. The basket has been redesigned. This is the old basket and this is the new basket. This is large, plus it means that this piece right here allows you to put a build plate in. So the build plate sits on top of the bucket on the inside. Being able to leave the model on the build plate, not only does it get your build plate clean and cleans off any excess residue on there, make sure you wipe off the isopropyl alcohol before you stick it back in your machine. Honestly, I love that solution. This, look at this, the, the platform itself, so it's huge. This platform has tiny little raised bumps. This allows for any sort of drippage that may occur from holes to let the resin leak out of your model because it's not solid. Plus, ready? So not only are there more LEDs in here providing UV wavelength light, there is this part up top which has a couple lights in it. In fact, I think it has four and you can focus it down. So if you have a model then spinning around, this will concentrate some of the light near the top and you get a better cure. Okay, what is this? What is this? This is a, oh, wow. Okay, this is going to then let the light bounce up and down. It doesn't mention anything about whether or not the back is a sticker. Uh, I mean, if I just set it there, it's not gonna go anywhere, especially when this is right on top. You got your model there. If the bucket is on here, you don't want the reflector in place. There are four magnets on there that match four magnets here. I think I get the general idea. The controls up front, I might have to peek my head around just to make sure I know what I'm doing or take a peek in the monitor, but it's got wash and it's got cure. And this is vision. This is vision sculpted by Fotis Mint, my boy. And this is from WandaVision and the Marvel Cinematic universe. I mean, it looks it looks really good. Like I said, this was printed on the Anycubic Mono X. This is in Soriatech Fast Gray Resin, and I used Lychee Slicer's default 0.05 millimeter layers and cure time. It didn't take that long. It still has that, that shine to it, and I'm excited to test out using the Mono X build plate in that system. The first step in our journey is adding isopropyl alcohol and... Uh, a large container takes a lot of isopropyl alcohol. Well, it doesn't appear that we have enough isopropyl alcohol in order for the build plate to be cleaned by the isopropyl alcohol. Well, that's unfortunate. I guess I should have bought three times as much. It looks like it was, it was able to get his head about, about that much. Well, now what we can do, we'll test vision in the basket and get it all washed up. Oh, look at that. Look at that, it just fits. Oh, that's so nice. So we take out this piece because that's what held the build plate in. And then we can lower this all the way down. Oh yeah, 
six minutes. I did six minutes, and we're now at the four minute mark. So like the other machine, it looks like it's gonna change the spin direction. Two minutes into a six minute cycle, it's changing. So now we'll have to see if at two minutes it changes again. Meanwhile. Look at that, we're get, I'm, I'm looking in the monitor right down there, and I can see the timer is getting to two minutes and the speed is slowing down. So it looks like the spin direction in the wash cycles changes every two minutes. And I like that. Eventually. Three, two, one, bingo! So what's nice is the basket, the Tisca to Tasca to Basket has handles. Did a good job. It got resin into places that it needed to get into. Now is when I would remove the supports. Some people do it before curing, some people after curing, some people uh, drink Coke, some people drink Pepsi, you know, some people drive trucks, some people drive cars. It's honestly, it's a matter of preference. Whatever you find to be the process that gives you the quality that you're looking for. Okay, already uh, I'm enjoying this process quite a bit. These aren't slimy. Typically, uh, when I'm trying to rinse off a model, especially something that's a little bit larger, printed on like the Mono X or the Elgu Saturn, I mean, I can slush this around in the isopropyl alcohol. I can't fit a toothbrush into there, but just being able to have all of this cleaned off is fantastic. I love having that larger bucket. This is the platform that it's gonna cure on. It isn't sitting flat and flush. And so if you have drain holes on the bottom of your model, it still allows it to drain while it's curing. This is better. All right, Vision, you're gonna get cured. There we go. Hi, look at that. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I missed one of the support structures. Sorry about that, Vision. Yeah, 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 I'm getting there, I'm getting there. You can definitely tell with that piece that extends over the top, it's getting light on top of the model, whereas before it would just be brushing across. So the little piece that you put down so that it can reflect up, that doesn't appear to be staying where it should stay. I don't know how useful that is. <laughs> hey, look at that, vision's done. He is cured, which means we can remove the gloves because we're no longer touching uncured resin. Wow, look at that. Look at that. The detail on this model is exquisite. Fotis, you did an amazing job on this. Have a look. This is where the supports were. Uh, doesn't look too bad. With so much detail on this model, it's really, really difficult to, to put supports in places because there's no place that I really want to stick sandpaper. <laughs> Honestly though, quite the result. Well, just like that, we took a print from the Anycubic Mono X in Soriatek Fast Gray Resin, and we put it on top of the Wash and Cure Plus. It's bigger, just like the box said. It has advanced features. It does look like uh, some of the things don't work as predicted. My guess is static, static electricity is an adversary that this uh, hasn't quite conquered. I do like that this folds down and provides UV light at a more top-down angle. And I like that you can do more than just two, four, or six minutes for the wash and for the cure. Plus, this is a sweet bucket. I like this bucket. It's sealed, everything fits inside, and you can actually use the build plate in there as long as you get enough isopropyl alcohol at the drugstore. So at this point, uh, this looks like something that I would recommend. I like that it makes the cleanup of resin prints a little bit easier. Plus with the cost of larger resin printers going down, it means that more people are gonna be able to pick those up when they're available. And it also means that more people are gonna need to clean their models. And sure, there are ways that you can come in and make your own little little tub with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, some people have an ultrasonic cleaner and they'll put their model in a Ziploc bag with IPA and then in the cleaner is water and that way uh, they're not using a bunch of isopropyl alcohol. Um, you can also create your own UV oven. Plenty of tutorials on how to do that. But if you want something like this, an all-in-one unit that you can get and set up and use within minutes, I would recommend this. This ain't bad at all. I really like this. Right now, it's a pre-sale period. Uh, I know the website says sold out, but it looks like in the coming days, it's going to be ready for sale, and it looks like the price tag is going to be 169 bucks US. That's really not bad. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I got pricing information updates. 
So this goes on sale April 15th at seven o'clock in the morning, Pacific Standard Daylight, whatever time zone this is, Pacific Daylight or Standard Time, I don't know, but it goes on sale 7 a.m. on the 15th of April for $169. For the first thousand, the first thousand pieces are $169 US. After that, it's $249 US. A Little bit different of the, the pricing structure there. Just found that out, I wanted to make sure you were aware, all right, back to it. If you picked yourself up a resin printer of decent size for a few hundred dollars, another a little bit more than 150 bucks is really going to add on to your experience and make it that much better. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of resin printing. It's just messy uh, and I'm not set up for it well, but this machine, makes it not so bad, I kinda like that. As I said at the beginning, Nico Industries is the sponsor for a portion of this episode, and th this is the part. What I wanted to show you is cool and free, absolutely free. This is the faceplate from the Iron Man Mark 50 helmet, and you could get this for free if you go to nicoindustries.com and sign up for the mailing list. That's it, then you get this, well, and the rest of the helmet. Uh, I just didn't print the rest of the helmet yet, but let's get this cleaned up and I wanna show you the detail. While this is washing, let me tell you about Nico Industries. So Nico and his crew have this awesome website where you can go purchase and download all sorts of crazy, amazing models for 3D printing, such as helmets and armor and weapons from all your favorite pop culture properties. He also has this really cool course that'll teach you how to use Blender for 3D printing, right? So have a look, this is it right here. This is just the face plate. There's a full helmet, which can be printed as well, but have a look at the detail on the inside. Is it that crazy? Is it that crazy? Like I said, go to nicoindustries.com, sign up for the newsletter, you'll get this STL for free, printed out. I'm gonna paint this one, I gotta cure it first, but I'm gonna paint it and then, and then, and then I'm gonna maybe print the helmet. I don't know, should I? What do you think? Thanks again to Nico Industries for sponsoring the part of this episode. Hey, we'll have you right back to it. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Do you agree or disagree? I'd love to hear it in the comments. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Practice kindness aggressively. I'll see you on the next one. As always, high five. Solo time. <laughs>